Hi, I'm Håkan. I'm Ann-Sophie. And together we are Hugsten, members of Studio Baustelle. Yes, and we're going to present today our next event, uh, Antinomian. Don't miss it. This is the Lise Park. I think that's how we pronounce it in, in German, Lise Park. It yeah. means silent park and um, it used to be a cemetery, so you will see a lot of tombstones around here. And um, I really like to come here um, yeah, for daily walks and uh, practices. And uh, I think it has a special atmosphere. Um, and I was interested in doing a project about it, so I started interviewing people and also the architects who, who created this park. And uh, uh, it's supposed to be a silent park, right? But uh, all these kids that come here, they also create lots of noise. So I wanted to give the dead a, a voice in the negotiations for the kind of noise levels here. So I did a, a recording of the tombstones using contact microphones. I started... Uh, yeah, doing um, field recordings from the tombstones to see if I could capture the voice of, of the dead here. And uh, there are some, some sounds that you can uh, listen to. Uh, I actually asked for permission also to take a tombstone, uh, actually not from here, but from the cemetery on the other side of the wall. So I used that to then uh, play this composition through <laughs> the tombstone as a speaker. So there are vibrations from the ground and then you can, I mean, you can hear some sounds there that are actually not ground sounds. It's yeah. something else, what, what it actually is. It's, uh, yeah, you can listen and, and figure out yourself. So yeah, this is where we do our daily practices. What did you call the track? Dead silence, negotiating <laughs> noise with the non-living. Nice. <laughs> this one, I haven't seen that before. Warum? So on this gravestone it's just written why. <laughs> yeah, so let's just turn it on. I'm just gonna uh, prepare my tea. So I'm sitting here with Hawkon and Ansophie. Um, they are two of the minds behind a series of spiritual events in uh, Berlin. And uh, also in, was it in Sweden already? Or? I was going to Sweden uh, in October, right? Yeah. A part of it. Yeah. So okay. it's not, it's have, hasn't been yet. <laughs> so I'm here with Hawkon and Ansophie, two of the minds behind international events of <laughs> spiritual uh, art. So I think maybe it's the best thing to just start yourself and explain a little bit what was your intentions to start and uh, what is, in your opinion, that made it different from things that already exist in relation with the spiritual community. Great question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you want to start saying about how you started actually the series? Uh, yeah, I, culture? yes. Uh, I started in 2020 with the one called Current Contemporary Culture at Studio Baustelle in Berlin, where I invited uh, artists in the occult sphere to showcase their work. And then also had an event in 22 called uh, Chthonic, whatever's down there, about uh, underlying current in your, it could be in your subconscious, it could be in your spiritual practice, it could be whatever you find in your deepest contemplations. Yeah. And um, 
presented art about that. And now we're doing together as Hugsten uh, this uh, antinomian uh, event that's going to be a mix with a lot of visual art. It's going to be performance, rituals, sound art, and and um, we want to showcase what occult art is and what it might be also what it could be mm. hopefully <laughs> so uh, with the events before and now you're also inviting other people it's not your own art just that you're ex uh, uh, exhibiting i no. think is the word yeah. uh, no yeah. we're inviting more artists and trying to broaden the spectrum a little bit so to divert from what we think is maybe the norm within the yeah. cult scene to try to which is what it. Yeah, which is it? Yeah. I mean, actually, it's a good question. What are the norms and yeah. what does it mean to be antinomian yeah. or being an occultist or a cult artist today? Because if you look uh, back in history, uh, art and uh, you, uh, you can uh, art <laughs> and occultist uh, have always been kind of um, uh, yeah antinomian or breaking conventions, yeah. uh, especially in moral conventions, social conventions, religious conventions. Uh, take like Hilma O'Klint, um, uh, the, the... Genesis Peorage. Yeah, and the... Um, mm, surrealists, mm. yeah. And, and always kind of groundbreaking, challenging morality, etc. And yeah. But what does that mean today in... in, in Open kind or maybe not so open society. Who knows? Yeah. So is that, it even possible to, yeah. to so, break something yeah. or to yeah. do something outside of the norm? So that's what we want to understand now. What artists are? You know, what are they? Why are they calling themselves occult artists? What are they? What are the topics that they are? Uh, yeah. yeah, challenging or, or working with. Yeah. What is, in your opinion, for you personally, what you consider challenging? So, yeah, if we look backwards to our uh, practice and how we've been involved in, in the occult scene, I think there's a lot of kind of power structures in, mm. in the occult scene, mm. um, which, I mean, uh, it used to be liberal, progressive, maybe a hundred years ago. Now, uh, I'm not so sure anymore, or challenging at least a uh, hundred years ago. Uh, uh, terms shifted a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, sex magic was super uh, uh, controversial. taboo, <laughs> controversial yeah. yeah. hundred years ago. Uh, is there anything that's controversial uh, today? So what is antinomian yeah. today? When I read it first, like in the introduction, I thought that's, this is something that uh, could be really interesting. And I'm looking forward also to mm. see the event. What was your main reason that you decided to uh, do this kind of events? I think both of you have um, a busy life and uh, uh, different uh, uh, jobs or uh, uh, things to do. So I think what is the reason that you decided, OK, I put my time and effort now to do something for this community and show a bit of things for uh, of others? You started it. Yes, I started it. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I felt it was time. It's a good time that you have almost two years to recuperate <laughs> because I know they've been every two years. So I can do one and and let it go and and then get the longing for it to do one again. So, but this one was that we wanted to more challenge the the occult uh, art. Uh, what it could be, kind of, if it's... Um, I don't want it to be so traditional. Yeah. But you had also been in... I mean, there was a, a occult art event organized. You yeah, helped yeah. organized it in, in Stockholm in 2015 or mm -hmm. something. And then we moved to Berlin. So there we again wanted to uh, start something because um, we thought that was really interesting, or you thought that was really interesting, uh, and uh, I also wanted to be involved. So it's evolving very easily here in Berlin that you can, like, you have the opportunity to do stuff like this. It's you decide, <laughs> you make it. <laughs> and there's lots of people you can. Yeah, you can invite, you can invite and and, uh, and we we invited artists from Sweden and also a lot of uh, German artists and. Uh, since it's being in, in Berlin, it's also international because it's very international. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's going to be a mix of uh, 
little bit of everything, I think. Um, yeah, some photography, or maybe you want to present the artist? Photography is going to be collage art, it's going to be um, uh, tr more like traditional painting also, but also m with a nice mixture of performances, ritual, rituals and uh, music and sound art. Death meditations. Yeah, we're going to do death meditations. <laughs> How is that? Uh, like, uh, how did you plan to do that? And thinking of because so I have something. This is something similar. we wanted to do for quite some years. I think it was under during COVID yeah, that we actually. came up with that concept and haven't really done it yet. But so we wanted to do yeah death meditations where we actually it's a guided meditation uh, through different deaths. So um, the first one will be infection. Mm -hmm. So death by infection and, and then we have uh, others, others. so there will be four death me meditations just for everyone to understand I think what they want to say is not that they inject things into <laughs> people and they, <laughs> so they die I think no uh, they're no no, no. Some, it's meditation <laughs> not uh, <laughs> medication yeah, no, exactly, it's not exactly. yeah exactly yeah uh, yeah so and that's the idea yeah and maybe that can lead to some interesting conversations afterward about because I I think there's a fear of talking about death as a vital part of life. And if we can think about it and visualize maybe our own death, maybe we don't put so much emphasis on being scared about it or yeah. something and like that. What we think about now is should we have an integrative part after the death meditation or should we just leave people in, in the in death the, experience? Yeah. In the feeling of dying, I yeah, don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Um, that sounds interesting. Um, is it planned for this time? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay. So it will okay. be on the weekdays. Between. So you also uh, do a performance and uh, and uh, and uh, things like how is it called events yourself, mm. and not just hosting the event. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Oh, yeah. Exactly. So we will do a performance at the opening as Hug Sten, uh, uh, and uh, it it will be a ritual. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then we do these death meditations, and we will also have one art piece. It's not the traditional painting, it's going to be objects mm. or, yeah, and some kind of painting, maybe. <laughs> uh, and, oh, the, yeah. and the <laughs> event is uh, on uh, starting on Friday, the 24th of May, until the Saturday 1st of June. And these death meditations, I mean, it's not something new, that's nah. a traditional Buddhist practice. How was the last events that you did? Was it like uh, already some something of a bigger bigger proportion, or are you satisfied with how it went uh, until now? I mean, this event is bigger because of how I felt about the last one. I think because I I felt it was almost the same artist, and it became almost like in a, a little mold. And I wanted to sort of try to break that a little bit, yeah. or we want to do that. And Uh, uh, elongated event more than just a couple of days uh, looking at paintings or we want more like people come and interact yeah. <laughs> be I, upset I don't know yeah. do something <laughs> yeah I, I think this will be a successful event if if uh, if we plant some new thoughts in people's heads if artists have may met new faces new people may maybe start new collaborations and also lastly if uh, People just had a good time, yeah, and yeah. Uh, um, uh, yeah, this will be remembered as, and, as part yeah. of the community. And maybe community thought it was form. a little bit interesting. Yeah, I mean, when we with the exhibitions, it has a tendency to only attract people at the opening, or most people at the opening, mm. the, ver uh, the vernissage, and then the second day and the days after, there are not so many people coming. So, so what we wanted to do this time is to focus more or include more performances, more music, as you say. Yeah. Uh, so we can have spots. All yeah. the days. But also not too much. Different on groups of interest. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So not too much on the same day. Yeah. Uh, um, and it's a great idea to have this community space. It's a small space. We only have one kind of room, and yeah. then but there's uh, people usually hang out outside on just on the front. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, possible too. Yeah. yeah. It's an artist collective in Neukölln called Studio Baustelle, where we both are members now. I think you can check on, on yeah. uh, your Instagram, or yes. uh, I link also the Instagram and uh, other uh, websites, accounts, whatever it is. I just link everything in the description, so who is interested can just uh, check that out also. What do you think? Uh, one question that is a little bit personal now, um, but personal, uh, personally interesting for me also to know. 
uh, which is what is lacking for you in your opinion in occult communities or uh, people in general who are interested in spirituality um, that you think could be optimized? Good question. So <laughs> one thing I think is that um, the occult scene is quite introverted, I would say. And uh, especially in, in uh, with regards to occult art, as we mentioned before, Psychic TV, Temple of Psychic Youth, mm -hmm. Comb Transmissions, they really had kind of an uh, outward, uh, yeah, they were visible and in, in had um, something to say actually and to uh, provoke, provoke. Yeah. and uh, I think I think occult art and occultism, occultism still can have that role mm. uh, uh, I'm, I'm you know there are lots of people probably who would disagree with this and are completely not interested in that uh, but at least occult art I think mm -hmm. could be much more outward facing and uh, it's it, it has been to me it seems like it's stuck a bit uh, so I, I would re I ho really hope we will see some new stuff at Antinomian. Yeah and, and my uh, uh, interest is also to sort of merge kind of uh, art and occultism doing these kind of performances that's, that's picking elements from rituals that I've done in a ritual sense before but using it uh, as an art yeah. now so yeah. uh, for me that's very that's something we are working on yeah. uh, to mixing this kind of ritual elements with the performance art yeah so maybe that's actually a, a way uh, for uh, the occult scene or occult community to to express itself is through art i guess yeah. I, I guess that's maybe is one answer to your question mm -hmm. yeah. that that yeah, we would uh, sign up on. Okay, so we go to um, their place now and I show you some other interesting uh, concepts that they have in store. Okay. Yeah, the mouth harp, yeah. Yeah, the one uh, It's a replica of the oldest one found in Sweden. We um, together has been starting to perform maybe a, a couple of years ago as Hugsten, trying to incorporate uh, rituals into visual and sound performances and um, the way we use the, the idea we have about using rituals in, in art performances is to tactically use it for temporal suspension of disbelief and then operationally for introducing a meaning beyond pure aesthetics and then uh, strategically to uh, create uh, possibilities for new or imagining new worlds or future, yeah, new futures. Um, that's the idea. I mean, it sounds very <laughs> ambitious, but uh, that's a concept. And so we inter we use both ritual, craft, music, yeah. Uh, visuals, yeah, mm. and tools like normal tools <coughs> and crafts, and to sort of make them represent something like work or hard labor or it could be one of those things. Yes, I'm also a visual artist and I we've done a project together with the Enochian Sex Magic where we... Uh, the Over the course of a f couple of years we explored the Enochian Aetherist through uh, uh, sex magic and uh, scrying by putting those uh, results or visions into paintings and uh, sounds, sounds, which yeah. we exhibited at uh, uh, Studio Baustelle. Yeah, I have three paintings. Uh, this is one, and, and uh, those two are also in the series, where and they are painted within the ritual and not not altered after. Yeah. So it's just like the f the first impressions. I found it interesting when we exhibited these that they or yeah that. I mean, they are kind of abstract because they depict the visions yeah. that, that... Yeah, exactly. The visions, they, yeah. yeah. And so they were not symbolic and, and a lot of occult art is often symbolic or figurative. But this is actually what... So it's both figurative, it describes what actually was yeah. in the visions. But it's abstract because it was super alien. Super alien and more focused about shapes and it was very, as a hypnagogist status, very fluent, very flux. It's uh, 
massive of images passing through and colors and it could be sounds as well so it's <laughs> the challenge was to try to capture this movement kind of thing and also quickly within the ritual yeah so within the open hypnagogic state come to antinomian yes. exhibition at studio Bartale, 24th of mm -hmm. april to may 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 24th of may <laughs> to 1st of june yes